Scenario 5. Undimensioned and Unseen. Your search of the village of Dunwich has uncovered a number of documents, journal entries, and esoteric theories. Reading through these materials leaves you exhausted and emotionally drained. Most of the content was written by a single source, a man named Seth Bishop. When you ask around town, you learn that Seth is a citizen of Dunwich. Along with several others, Seth had witnessed firsthand the devastation wrought by the events of the Dunwich Horror, as Armitage has dubbed the incident. Curiously, since that time, very few people have seen Seth around town, and those who did claimed his eyes had been bloodshot and his face sweaty and pale. You don't doubt that somebody who has seen what Seth has seen would appear nervous or paranoid, but the more you read of his frantic and unhinged writings, the more you believe he's involved in the recent events. His writings speak of having gathered the remains and of using arcane methods to imbue the Father's essence into other's creatures and eventually into other people. The explanations and diagrams that follow are unfathomably complex and defy understanding. Before you're able to find Seth and confront him, several men and women from the village approach you in a panic. It's back, one of them wails. You realize him, recognize him as Curtis Waitley of the Undecayed Branch. Whatever... Whatever it was that killed them fries, it's back. Up and smashed the bishop's home like it were a made of paper. Curtis and the other townsfolk were clamor are clamoring amongst themselves, raising their voices in a panic. The investigators must choose. You either try to calm down the townsfolk in order to, order to learn more, or you try to warn the townsfolk and convince them to evacuate. And I am going to try and warn the townsfolk and convince them to evacuate, because uh, they weren't too mean to me. Um, in the last scenario, I got those two treacheries on two locations. That never amounted to much. So, I'm going to warn them. You warn the townsfolk that they are in grave danger and urge them to flee Dunwich while they can. Several of them immediately heed your advice, remembering the terrible monstrosity that had previously endangered the town. Curtis drops to his knees in despair, sweating feverishly. It's that thing again, ain't it? It's come back for us. Curtis stutters. I hope you've got some of that powder the old professor had last time. We couldn't even see the damn thing until he sprayed it. To this day, I wish I hadn't seen it at all. Something must be done to stop the monster's rampage. But, if the documents you found are true, there may be more than one such creature on the loose. Recording the campaign log that we've warned the townsfolk. Warned the townies. Uh, these are not correct. Okay, um, I've got most of the setup complete already like to do it ahead of time uh, so I've got the locations there I've got the like side deck of locations to do the random movement um, the deck is already made uh, so there was uh, under the number of names recorded under sacrifice to Yogg there was one name listed uh, so I have one brood in play one of the random broods in play at the uh, cold spring glen one random one at play at the Blasted Heath. And then three set aside right here. Um, I'm not going to flip those up or the location until I've done my opening hands, I think is the correct way to do it. Uh, each copy of Esoteric aside. Uh, Gloria got the Powder of Mgazi, and I had uh, four clues for saving four of them. Uh, finally, I already did this weakness draw, um, Skids got, these are the ones that I didn't get, it was an Indebted and a Reckless, which weren't eligible, and I'm only using, um, the core Dunwich, Return to Dunwich, what were they? Dunwich Legacy, Return to Dunwich Legacy, Core, and Starter X, right, that was the other one, so I'm only using those, uh, oh, right, I was looking for what the weakness he was uh, he had paranoia, and he picked up a chronophobia. And I think that she picked up an internal injury. Which is not... A, which is a really bad one for her to get, because she only has five health. Um, and then... We shuffle the remainder of the encounter to build the encounter deck. Okay. Uh, the random location thing. So here's my things. I can just click R on it, and it will tell me which one they're moving to. Uh, we don't have any doom. At the end of the enemy phase, move each brood of Yogg-Sothoth enemy once towards a random location, and then we need two in 
clues per investigator at the ruins to advance, and let's do our opening hands. So let's start with uh, Skids here. I bought him a Charisma between games, and I dropped two cards. One of I don't remember what they were, but I got an Unexpected Courage and a Guts to try and help with the uh, with the tests. So let's get five over here. This is this is an okay start. Um, the bread is a bit less important because I can't use it on the broods, but those uh, avian thrall will be really good against, and the uh, the uh, lupine thrall will be really good as well. This is about as good of an opening hand as I can ask for, I think. Um, I think I'll mulligan the leather jacket because I probably don't need that right off the bat, and that'll be marginally useful. And then you shuffle. One, two, three, four, five. That is not great. The rosary will be useful. The guts will be useful. The ritual candles will probably be useful. Yeah. Um. Oof. This is rough. Let's get rid of the guts. I don't think I need a shortcut right now. I'd like to get some more setup stuff. And a perception, well, I mean, that gets me clues right off the bat. Which, so that's progress and also drawing into other cards. So I'm, I'm happy to have that in opening hand, I think. Oh, two cards, and yeah, see, that's not great. So this will probably be like an investigate with a perception, see what I get, and do a gl glimpse to get some different things, because this is not great. Um, so we're, 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 we're going to be very accepting of resigning on this scenario because resigning here move a brood once towards the Domage village oh dear and we've got the brood of yog sothoth with six health and the brood of yog sothoth that moves twice oh dear all right uh let's get right into it so I think I'm going to start off with uh, Gloria. So we don't want to stand here at the end of the turn because technically both of these guys can, could could end up here, um, and then we had we'd be kind of buried. We could go here. Um, and he's very easy for, or he's a lot easier, I shouldn't say very easy, he's a lot easier for skids to dodge, and, uh, to evade, and, um, it's less likely that he's going to, like, move, move, than for both of them, for, for at least one of them to move here. Yeah. So, I think we want to, uh, move to the Ten Acre Meadow, if we can. So, let's uh, let's just start off with an investigate. Um, no, let's see. There must be something else. How much up am I? I am four against two. Um, yeah, I think I play the ritual candle and then investigate. Minus one for one clue. Um, it's a bummer because I really would like to get more set up on him, but I don't think I can. So I'm going to do her that move that I said. There's one clue, lure a monster into the rain. There's a clue from the Tokamak on an abomination enemy in the Ten Acre Meadow. At the end of the round, remove a clue from that enemy. Okay, so this, you need to get someone here and then come in and dump on them and kill them that turn. Okay. All right, so that's uh, that's Gloria. Skids is going to drop his uh, lucky cigarette case into play, and then he's going to gamble for two resources with um, with a lucky cigarette case. Or sorry, with a manual dexterity. I mean to say, I don't know why I said lucky cigarette case. Uh, so he is five against two. That's minus two for two broods in play. We're going to play the Daring Maneuver, which is going to give us three to the skill value, and draw us a card. We're going to... You, so we were at... So we were five against two, 
minus 2 was 3 against 2, plus 3 is 6 against 2, so we can use this to look at the top 4 cards of the deck and draw one of them. I'm really tempted to hit this paranoia intentionally, to lose one resource from it. And then take resources, uh, take one, two, three, four as the successful test result for the gambling. Um, yeah, I think as stupid as that might be, I'm actually going to do that. So I'm going to lose one resource uh, drawing that. Um, and then uh, I will draw a card from the manual dexterity. And then I will gain one, two, three, four resources for successfully gambling. Okay, um, let's in let's think, let's think. Yeah, let's toss the Beretta into play. One, two, three, four, and we'll move with uh, we'll move with Gloria. Yeah. Okay. Enemy phase. At the end of the enemy phase, move, move each brood of Yog Sothos enemy once towards a random location. So we're gonna do him first. And he's going to move to the Devil's Hop Yard. And then, whoops. After he moves for the first time, he's unengaged, so he immediately moves again towards another random location. And he's going to move back to the Blasted Heath. All right, that's nice that he's frigging around doing nothing. And then this brood is going to move to the Devil's Hop Yard, which is going to be that, is going to be the, clo the fastest. Uh, upkeep. Upkeep. Sneak by is nice to have. Arcane Studies is very nice to have. That will help us um, really crush those tests on fighting these guys. That'll be really nice. Okay. Uh, one out of five Doom. Let's do an encounter card for Skids first. Attached enemy gains Elite. Which one of them? All right, let me think. Do I have anything in my decks that care about um, them being elite? I actually don't remember off the top of my head. Um, I don't think so. I'm actually just going to do, rather than pulling up my Arkham DB, I'm just going to do this really quick. Is there anything in here that gives a shit about, oh, I've left the backstabs in the deck. That's silly. I should have bought an adaptable and swapped them out for something more useful. Yeah, that's a mistake. All right, nothing in there matters. Oh, let me shuffle, let me, let me shuffle that. I'm not going to, I don't think anything in here matters either. Yeah, n nothing in either of those cares, so that's just going to go on him. I'm just going to do that, I guess. And then it surged. Did I forget to shuffle it? <laughs> forgot to shuffle it. All right, let's try that again. There are no investigators at the same location as Brood, Brood, and Destruction Gain Surge. Otherwise, that. Okay, so that, that surges. Choose an abomination. Heal all damage that enemy in uh, when you enter the attached enemy's location or vice versa. Ooh, take one horror. Okay, so I want this to be on this guy, I think. Test three, uh, five against two. Yep. All right. Let's do a little more setup. Um, she will one, two for an arcane studies, and I am going to from. Thank you. Uh, oh, did I not remove the snaps on these? Snap. 
someone in the uh, comments in the last video sent me this suggestion. I can use these. Maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll size them up a little bit. But when I click my upkeep, they should get used up. So I'll pl drop that into play. I will investigate here using those two for plus two. So I'm at uh, four, five, six against three. Successful. And then we're going to move down to the uh, Cold Spring Glen. Each enemy in the Cold Spring Glen gets evade after it is chosen as a random location. Investigator get, tests that. If successful, choose a different random location. Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, all right. That's cool. She's not going to be able to pass that, but he might be able to later. Um, let's see. I think he needs to draw some cards, is what he needs to do. Uh, we're going to do this uh, bidding zero, so we're, uh, we're three against zero. Minus one, I succeed by two. I look at the top two cards of the deck. Nimble's going to be useful. Let's, um... Move here. How many investigates can I take? If you fail, take a horror. So that's like the worst thing that can happen if I fail. Um, let's still do an investigate. Minus three during an attack. Nope, nothing. And then um, let's actually take a resource so that we can look, look what I found later. Okay, so that's that's that. Um, enemy phase will do his first. Blasted Heath. And then he moves again because of his ability. Ten Acre Meadow, which was going to be down to the Waitley Ruins. And then... Oh, I should turn... Okay, you know what I should do? Yeah, I don't really have a better way of doing this, do I? All right. I hate those snaps. I should turn those ones off. Uh, and then this guy's going to move. And he's going to move to the 10-acre meadow. Well, we can get a clue on him, but we can't uh, We can't do this part yet. So, upkeep. Upkeep. Nice, it does work. Haha, <laughs> beautiful. I like it. Ready, ready. Uh, two out of five doom. Counter card over here. Idle hands. Bonus actions. Attached to a brood of Yog sothoth enemy in play. If that enemy's at your location, take one damage. Gets plus one fight and plus one health. Um, I think I'll put it on that guy. I want to kill this one first. This guy like takes a couple turns, but I can do the evading. But I think I'll put it on him. Uh, maybe I cancel this. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to cancel that actually. I feel like that's really bad. Giving them bo letting them have bonus health is actually like really nasty. Um Okay. So what am I going to do about this? Cuz I've got to get to the Waitley ruins to get the formulas, right? Ugh. Yuck. All right, let's go with um let's go with skids first. gonna do this and he's gonna commit a nimble to it and he's gonna pay one resource in I believe so he's three up minus three it's immediate oh, that's exactly successful and I'm going to pay for the daring maneuver to get plus three skill value and draw a card um, I'm going to use this to search the top three cards of my deck because I'm at three over now. Four. Ah, uh, yes. On the lamb is what cares about them being elite or not. Um, okay, so that does matter. And 
And these guys are massive and also do that. Okay, so I'm not taking the backstab, obviously. Let's grab the on the lamb now. Um, because that'll be useful to have in hand pretty much right away. Um, and then at the end, oh, uh, one, two for the successful, uh, gamble. And then at the end of that, I get to do three moves. So I'm going to go move. Place up to two of their clues on an abomination at the Blasted Heath. Okay. Move. That's not supposed to follow me. Place two of his or her clues on an abomination of the Devil's Hop Yard. Okay. And then uh, one more move. I'm going to reveal this, and I'm going to be there with him. Test four. If you successful, move a brood. Let me one in any direction. Right. Okay, that's where you control them. So I need to spend enough clues as a group to advance. Yeah, right. Right, right, right. Okay. Um, so he needs to evade that guy now. So I think he's just going to do four against... When you enter the attached enemy's location or vice versa, take a horror. So he did take a horror. Um, he's going to have to evade him, and I'm going to have to use the icons I have here. So I can go how much up? Um... Getting three up would be really nice. Let's commit the sneak by to be two, and the other sneak by to be four. Yeah, let's go. Let's go eight against four to evade this guy. Okay, so we do succeed. He's evaded. I'm going to investigate three against two. Uh, this token's modifier is minus four instead, because I cannot remove any clues from anything. Uh, three against two. I fail by two or less because my modified value is zero. Is that right? I don't, I don't remember if that's right. I think it is. Yeah, I think that's right. Look what I found. Um, I probably have to trigger this, don't I? Yeah, I'm going to trigger that for to get an action back, but I take the two damage. Um, and I'm actually just going to take a resource and take a resource, because I think I want to get Lonnie into play to help me tank a bit. Okay, whoops. Okay, so that's that. Um, Gloria is going to two over here. We might be able to take this guy out pretty quick, and that's what I'm hoping for. So she's going to move in. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yeah, so we're going to clear this to advance. Armitage survived the Dunwich legacy. There, Armitage sighs a breath of relief, jotting down the last phrases of the formula. I've translated the last of it. He shudders as he hands you the script, the words conjuring forth memories of his battle with the creature. I hope this is the last time I'll have to read it, he admits. But if we do nothing, the end result will be much, much worse. Each investigator gets an esoteric formula in play. Ah, where'd that go? Okay. One, two... And now she can start fighting these assholes. So she's going to... How much health does this guy have? He has one, two, three, four health. So I think that she's going to play her rosary. And then one, two. Do an attack. So she's already at five, six, seven, eight against six. I think she is going to use the powder of Ibn Ghazi. Whoops. To get plus two. So she'll be ten against six. And she'll be using the esoteric formula for the fight. It immediately attacks you. Okay. So it hits her for one, two, three. But she does hit it for one damage. And that's 
her. Um, at the end of the enemy phase, move each brood of Yog Soth off enemy once towards a random location. So I guess he's moving first towards the Devil's Hop Yard, which puts him up here. And then he's at. Oh, when she moved in, she should have taken a horror from the uh, Altered Beast, I guess. And then. After he moves for the first time, if it's unengaged, it immediately moves again towards a random location, okay? And then he moves back towards the 10 acre meadow. All right, well, at least he's still here, but um, but he does deal us both another horror. Oh, man, this is already dicey. Holy shit. Uh, and then this guy moves to the 10 acre meadow, so he doesn't move, I guess. Uh, does this say that what they can, can they move to the same one? Six, yeah, okay. It's not the five other locations, so we're good. So those guys ready. Upkeep. Upkeep. I hope I shuffled that. Um, three out of five doom, and we'll go with skids. Oh, at the end of the round, each investigator at the attached location takes one horror. Yuck. Ooh, I gotta remember that we get minus one. Uh, I think she still hit because that was a minus three and I was four up, but I do have to remember that. I'm going to give him plus one fight and plus one health. <laughs> that sucks. Okay, so I think that she is going to go first. And she's going to try and kill him if she can. Oh no, I guess he kind of has to go first. Can he even evade this guy? He's not He's not uh, exhausted. Yeah. Oh man, that is a really high evade value. I guess... Hmm. So five, six, seven, eight against six is the base. This gets me nine over the over the um, elder thing, but it doesn't get me to the minus four from the tablet. So I guess I use one. So I'm at five, six, seven, eight, nine against. Four six for one attack. Okay, so that's a damage. And then she'll use the other one for the next attack. Same deal. It's another damage. No icons. You could commit the on the lamb. I think I think she'll just try it. So she'll be five, six, five, six, seven, eight against six. Okay, well he does make another attack against her, but again it's five, six, seven, eight, and then plus one from this, which is nine against so I do the last damage to him. He goes into the victory display. And she is about to eat it. And she's probably going to have to resign soon. <laughs> Whew, okay. Oh no, I forgot about the minus one. That doesn't kill him, does it? No, that doesn't kill him. Brutal. Should have put another clue on him. Um, okay. So, can this guy even do anything at all? Not really. Let's do... Um, 
let's do this test. I guess he could evade that guy. Is the best he can do. And he could use the on the lamb to evade him. Alright, so let's do this test. We're just three up. Oh, man. Okay, so we don't succeed by anything. Um, yeah, nothing. Um, let's evade him with the on the lamb. So we're uh, four, five, six, seven against uh, four. Okay, so that succeeds. Um, so that's eight against four, so I'll use the lucky cigarette case. Whoops, no. To uh, look at the top four cards, putting the nimble, or the uh, quick thinking into my hand. He's evaded. Um, maybe I should try and get more clues on him just to kill him. Yeah, let's let's put another, another clue on this guy, because I don't think we're getting that many, and I think that I just as soon uh, use the powder to get rid of one off the board now. So what would I be at if I tried to make an attack at, at him with the skids? I'd be at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 against, no, 6 again because we're minus 1. So I think with that being the case, we're going to draw some cards to have some more options. I don't know that I shuffled this after I... Took that off the top. So draw. And then we'll one, two, three. I'm going to play him to have some horror soak instead of Lonnie. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so he's going to be doing his movement. Once to that double top yard. Oh, once a ba once again back to the Waitley ruins. Dealing a horror to each of them. And then he's going to move to the 10 acre meadow. What is going on with this? All right. Uh, upkeep, upkeep. Earl, you're a little late, buddy. And then at the end of the round, uh, we each take a horror. Holy shit. It's dire. It's dire. Attack, move, shortcut. Something like that. Take two horror, spawn, set aside Brood of Yogg Sothoth in a random location. I'm going to take one, two horror. I think we're going to be getting exactly one brood and then getting the fuck out of here. Yep, that's exactly what's happening. Yep. So, uh, let's do uh, her turn first. She is going to make a fight against him. She's going to use both of those. So she'll be at five, six, uh, no... Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, nine, and that to get over the uh, the tablet. So I guess she just goes. Okay, so he is toast because that does the last damage to him. The clues go away. The altar beast goes away, and he goes into the victory display for one VP. And I think that she just has to get the hell out of here because she doesn't really have many other options. I kind of wish that I put this on the skids, because then I could, he might be able to, like, do something. Because he could, like, pick up some clues and 
dance around the board a bit, but I don't think, uh, yeah. Maybe if some clues got on the next brood, it might have been okay, but I don't think with this it's working. So she's going to have to uh, move and then shortcut and then resign, which sends her out of the mission. Uh, Skids, on the other hand, is going to cry a lot. I wonder, like, I wonder how much of a waste of time it is to even bother buggering around and seeing if I can get some clues up on them up here. You know what I mean? Uh, but, I mean, it can't hurt to try, right? So Skids will move up. He'll, uh, investigate, uh, which is four against one. Only one brood in play, so he succeeds by two, which I'm going to uh, use my lucky cigarette case to look at the top two cards and choose one of them to add to my hand. It's going to be the manual dexterity. Um, he's going to do this bidding one, whoops, bidding one and putting a manual dexterity into it, and that's it. Minus three, so I do succeed. So I get two resources and a card draw out of that. Those are just icons. Uh, and then we'll investigate again, three up. Uh, minus four, so that's unsuccessful. Yep, and that's his turn. This guy is going to move at the end of the enemy phase to the Blasted Heath. Now I'm going to get him to go around this way, I think, because I can always just resign if I need to. It's, it's, uh, how do I like make this a nice, beautiful... Can I like link them? How does how does this work? Does it go like that? Perfect, perfect. So he's at Dunwich Village. Uh, no, you know what? Yeah, he's he's at Dunwich Village. That's fine. And then upkeep occurs. Okay, so her stuff. I'm just gonna clean her stuff up. I think this just, like, vanishes, kind of. A lucky, that's nice. Four out of five doom. Okay, so he's probably going to have to punch himself with that. A little unfortunate, but let's first try to get this clue and get the draw off of it. Um... Because technically he could get like four clues onto an abomination and even get one on them down there. So there's a possibility of of of, of beating one more. It's not likely, but I'm going to try. Uh, so I'm three up on this test and investigate. Uh, three up, so I'm four up. So I'm going to use that to look at the top four cards in my deck. And we're going to get that uh, lucky that 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 into our hand right there. We'll get the guts later. And we get the clue. And discovering the last clue lets us exhaust Professor Warren to draw a card. We're going to take an action to deal two damage to Professor Rice. But discard this. Because we will we just fail that every single turn if we if we try to go for that. Um, and we will pay one, two, three, four for Lonnie Ritter. And and then we will Yeah. Bid a resource with a quick thinking, I guess. Yeah, bid one resource with a quick thinking. I'm happy with that. Hey, there we go. 
Uh, so we get the action back and we're also getting this effect which is going to give us back precisely one on the land. No, it has to be level two or less. Uh, okay, so it'll be a... I think I'm gonna take a manual dexterity to actually evade uh, one of the broods. And we bid a resource into that so we get money back. Um, I just want to, I think I want to move here so that I can put clues on him if I, uh, where do I want to be? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to have to discard at the end of this turn, but that's okay. I could get Erlen to play as well if I take a resource uh, for next turn. I'm just going to do that. I am going to hit my hospital debts um, if I keep futzing around with this. So he's going to move to the Blasted Heath. Okay, well he does move there. I, I don't know that I want to fight him though, because he has <laughs> two, four, six, eight health. That's a lot of attacks to take against him, and I gotta basically evade him each time, so that's like four turns of not failing any tests. <laughs> and and him not moving away. So, like, that's just super hard. And, and beating an a, the 8 fight, it's just not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Um, <laughs> let's get rid of a backstab, because they're not useful against these guys, and these are basically the same icon, but also the usability for the cigarette case and any over-succeed stuff I have. 5, Doom... We hit the threshold. Ah, nope. Wrong way. Shuffle the encounter, discard pile in the encounter deck, spawn one of the set aside broods at a random location. So we are going to spend spawn this one, the Bruvyog Sothoth Thrashing Spawn at the Ten Acre Meadow. And this gets discarded. Uh, when it advances, so that really should be there, I believe. And then we will be getting Rune of Destruction, which surges. And then we'll be getting a need for knowledge, which is testing our intellect. I am testing three against two, where I either take horror or place clues on my location. Um, let's see. So... Right now, he's who I'm aiming for, and I gotta get him here and here somehow. I, I gotta, like, hope that he finds his way there, I guess. And I'm kind of stuck in this position where he can move to me, or he can move to me if I'm moving away. He also has Retaliate, which means I really need to evade him before I take attacks. Since I'm so low. Um, but anyways, back to this need for knowledge. Let's commit the look what I found, I think. Uh, no, I think I just get these back okay if I fail. And I don't even fail, so whatever. <laughs> Easy, right? I don't even fail. Like, who, who was worried? I wasn't worried. I, I wasn't worried. Um, so I think I'm just going to keep, like, setting up and being a bit safer. So let's, um... Bid one money and commit a backstab to be three up. Oh, baby. Plus one. So I'm four up. I get to return a... Let's get the quick thinking back. Let's tap that for four. and then take two resources. Okay. I guess my question is, how do I... Oh, man. It's so much to... Like, because I don't have these anymore, right? Like, this is not something that's actually relevant. Let's put that away. I'd love to get one more, 
but I need so many to put this guy within fighting range, within a reasonable fighting range. Because I'd be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 against 7. So that's like, that's like still <laughs> failing with the tablet. Failing if I wait too long on broods. Failing on the minus 4. Ugh. Alright. 1, 2, 3 for Earl. For a little bit of extra longevity. I think that we're going to move here and try and get more of these clues. Minus two, I fail by two, so I'll spend two to get those two clues. So now I can put a button, now I have the four clues to use both of those if I need them. So let's move this guy first. That was the end of my turn. Yeah, that was the end of my turn. He moves to the Cold Spring Glen, which is two away if he moves there. Then this guy is going to move to the Devil Hopyard, and he's going to move on to me. Okay. That's all right. Upkeep. Some money. Okay, one of six, and we get a imperceptible creature attached to a brood of Yogg Sothoth enemy in play without a copy of an imperceptible creature attached. Remove one clue from that enemy. So we're gonna put, we are gonna put that on this guy. Um, yeah, so he's elite with eight to hit and eight health. He's not dying to me, at least. Um, I do need to evade this guy, so I'm currently at five to evade him. Five against three. I can commit a manual dexterity to evade him. First action. Is that what I want to do? Seven against three to evade him. Okay, so that's six against three, so I look at the top three cards in my deck when I trigger this. Um, let's take the chronophobia so that we can clear it. Uh, the manual dexterity goes away, these go away. Um, the evade is successful, and then the manual dexterity draws me a card, and then I will clear the chronophobia. Because I cannot afford to take a bunch of direct horror, and I don't want it later. And that's that turn. Uh, when I evaded an enemy, I'm not going to trigger this because I'm already at hand size and I'll just be even more over hand size if that happens. Um, so he'll move to the Dunwich Village and he will move to the Waitley Ruins. Okay. Uh, upkeep of Aki. We're going to discard the one of my daring maneuvers, because they're not even the good ones. And he's going to ready. And we already did the uh, upkeep, so two out of six. Start getting enemies from farthest location. So one, two, th one, two. So he goes on the Dunwich Village or the Blasted Heath. And we're going to put him there for sure so that we can play around that a bit better. And fortunately, I can kill him in one hit if I succeed by two. That's really nice about them. But it is indeed my turn again. My question is, is there a way for me to, like, pass this investigate test? <laughs> I really would like to pass that. Um, and I need to evade this guy again. Which is a shame. But I'm five against three, and I've got luckies in hand, so I think I just do the, inve do the evade. That's uh, a minus four, unless I remove all clues from a guy. Minus four. I was what? Five against three? 
So I, I can lucky that, and I think I just will. And I'll uh, I'll use I'll use Earl to draw a card off that. I'll play the emergency cast because I'm not gonna have time to do it any other time. I don't think. And let's um, do the um, three against zero test. Okay, fails anyways. Um, and I think I need to move up to the Devil's Hop Yard. Just because if he goes there, then I can put two clues on him and I might be able to start doing something. I kind of need to kill this guy next turn and he's going to be hunting there or there, depending on where I move. Or if I don't move. This guy might just walk away, and this might be like a total fool's errand. If that guy moves there and he moves there, then I gotta like play, play around with this. So he's gonna move at the hunter phase. I'm just gonna commit to that, and then he's gonna move to Cold Spring Glen. And he's going to move to the Waitley Ruins. All right. I guess I'm gonna go uh, Beretta this guy this turn. Upkeep. Three out of six doom. The avian thrall, he just uh, engages me. So let's see. Um, I need to start blasting these guys, and I have a huge two hit on this guy. I'm like uh, eight against two to hit him. Let's commit a quick thinking to it to be nine against two. So I get uh, minus two, so that's seven against two. So I succeed by five, so I can look at my whole deck. Um, let's just grab the this now. Uh, I get the action back. I ready this and deal three damage, right? I'll shoot again with the Beretta. Same deal. Minus one. Ready it and kill him. I'm going to do my test over here, which I'm going to commit a nimble to, and I'll be uh, four against zero. Just to get, I'm just trying to use this to get a move. Minus three, so I do get my move. So I'm going to scooch over to the uh, Lupine Thrall. I'm going to shoot him. Uh, eight against four. Minus two, so I get to... Uh, sorry, I exhausted it to use it. I succeed by two, so I do a bonus damage. Uh, on addition to the plus one, so that's three damage. So he's toast. Um, man, oh man. And then I will, uh, I'm just going to pay two into this right now, so I don't forget. I will uh, draw a card. Okay, Dr. Armitage. He's more wild icons to do stuff with. So he's going to move to Cold Spring Glen, and he's going to move to the Blasted Heath. Aha! Start putting clues on this asshole. Upkeep. The other Beretta, which I'm going to have to play over this at some point. Four out of six Doom. Take two Horror, spawn a set-aside brood of Yogg Soth off at a random location. Well, I think I'm taking two Horror. Sorry, Lonnie. So. Do I have what it takes? I wish I'd have kept that nimble. Because <laughs> then I could, like, move in, put the clues on him, evade him, get all the way back here, force him to move back this way, right? Move a brood once towards the village, that's the closest way, and then move over and put the clues on him. Oh, I'm kicking myself for that. All right. 
Let's figure out how we do this. I still got a lucky for evading him, so I'm going to move in. I'm going to use the Devil's Hopyard to put the two of my clues onto him. So I'm now six against seven without any commits. That's pretty good. Six against seven is definitely a huge improvement over two against seven. Let's evade him. I'm uh, two up. I'll use that to draw the last card of the deck. And he's evaded. Um, and then I guess I'll use Earl to uh, reshuffle the deck as well. And get a draw. And then I'm going to attack him with the Esoteric Formula. So I am currently 6, 8, 10, uh, 11 against 7. Minus 2. I succeed by 2, so the quick thinking goes off. I get another action that deals a damage to him. I draw a card because of Guts as well. All right, folks. <laughs> Lose all my resources. Oh, no! It was going so well! Um, <laughs> and then I will attack him again with the Esoteric Formula. No, I will not. Ooh, I gotta be careful. I have to be careful. Because I can do seven. No, I can do six, uh, six, eight, ten again. I could commit this to get to the eleven. But then next turn, I can't do shit. Unless he moves there. Then I can follow him in and, and, and blast him. Do I get the other damage on him now and risk having, like, no icons and no money to follow that up? I can tank a hit from him if I need to just run. So, I'm just going to go for it. Oh, baby! What is going on here? This is beautiful. Choose a card, get that guts back to my hand. And a damage on him. Holy fuck. I didn't think I was going to get another one. I thought this was like me. I was going to make you, uh, the viewer, the, you know, you as the viewer, sit here and watch me fuck around. But I'm super excited with how this is going. All right. I got to get this cleared somehow. I wish that, uh, that an emergency cash had been in there so I could just clear that. <laughs> and I'm kicking myself for not spending two of it on there. But it is what it is. So he's going to move to the Devil's Hop Yard. So he's got to move right there. Oh no, he's going to move to the Waitley Ruins. I know it. Alright, he's still in the Hop Yard. He readies. I ready. Not a good chance to hit him right now, though. Five out of six, and I'm going to get an enemy. Ooh. Choose an Abomination enemy. This is definitely what's happening. Okay. Let's um So let's do the the gamble on skids and we will commit the backstab for one icon. So we're four. We'll pay one into it so we're four against one. Minus two, and then we'll put this big uh, daring maneuver into it. So we were four against one, we got minus two, and then we get plus three. So we get plus one, so it's five against two, so we succeed by three. Whoops. Yep. Sneak by is what's coming, and then I get two resources. Okay, I'm going to evade him with the sneak by. 
uh, five against three. I gained two resources for initiating it. Okay, so he's evaded, and then Earl is going to draw me a card. Did I shuffle that? I swear that was the other the other card on top. Um, so he is evaded. I pay two into this. I can get to eight against seven, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight against seven. That sucks. <laughs> Let's draw a card. Nimble. I want so much to just try this with the guts and have the lucky. But I'm so nervous if that misses that I'm going to not be able to do anything. So I'm just going to draw again. Okay, quick thinking. I could have gone for it. Enemy phase. He's going to move. He stays at the Waitley Ruins. He's going to move. Ten Acre Meadow. Yeah, he moves down with him. What a bummer. Because now he's harder to hit, right? Upkeep. Six. Shuffle the encounter, discard pile into the encounter deck. Boom. Spawn one of the set aside brood of Yogg Sothoth enemies at the lead investigator's location. If able, then, then uh, test four. Makes an attack against each investigator who fails. So the last guy, uh, one of the last guys is going to spawn at me. It's the normal one. And he's going to make an attack against me. If I fail this test. So let's um, toss the manual dexterity and the nimble into this, I think. So I'll be at four, five, six, seven, eight against four. Eight against four. Minus one is seven against four, so I'm going to look at the top three cards of my deck to draw another manual dexterity. Drawing a card from this manual dexterity. And then resolving the nimble to move me. One, two is all I need, because I want to move him towards me with the Dunwich Village ability. And I never used this ability, so I can get a free clue on him. Yep, okay. And then, so that was that. And then I get a new encounter card. I don't know that I shuffled that. Counter card, violent commands. Uh, I think I'm okay. So, what's going to happen is I'm going to click the ability there to move him there. I'm going to move to him. I'm going to um, gamble four up with the quick thinking, I guess. Because I want an extra action in case this doesn't work. Minus three, so it does not indeed work. So I'm going to... I guess I just got to do the attack. Okay. Lure the monster into the rain. Place one clue from the token bank on an abomination enemy at the ten. So that just goes there. Um, at the end of the round, remove that clue from the game. So I'm going to attack him with the esoteric formula. Last action. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
Yeah, 10. Got him. Three damage. And now Skids needs to, to, to fucking retire. Um, let's, before the turn ends, put two on there. Uh, did, the, did that just disappear? I swear I just dropped one. All right. That was, that would, that get. Yeah. At the end of my turn, test three. Um, yeah. That's going to happen. Take a horror. Yep. He's going to move. To the ruins. And he's going to move. To the 10 acre meadow. Oh no, I got to evade him now. And I take a horror when he moves in. So Earl, I'm sorry. Alas. You're toast. Because um, I need her to stay in play. So upkeep. Alright, 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 alright. A doom goes on there. Oh, they each have plus one fight and plus one evade. Okay. I forgot about the plus one fight, but I still definitely hit because I pulled a plus one. Sword and then silent. So I need to evade this guy and resign. <laughs> um, okay, so this is still on me too. So what I'm going to do right off the bat is I'm going to do my gamble here. I'm going to pay one into it with a manual dexterity. So I'm five against one. Minus three, so I succeed by one. I'm going to play this Daring Maneuver to succeed by three instead. So I'll look at the three cards from my deck. I'm going to take um, this Daring Maneuver, I suppose, and draw a card with Manual Dexterity. And then I'm going to evade this guy. Oh, and I gain two resources for being successful. I'm going to evade this guy with a sneak by for two resources. Um, but I'm actually, no, first I'm going to play this uh, leather jacket, and then I'm going to pay one room. Oh, right, it's not damaged. Okay, that's fine. And then I'll um, have two when I sneak by this guy. So I'm currently uh, four against f five. No, four against three three because he's only getting plus one evade so I'll commit the on the lamb and the nimble to it on the evade of course I'll commit I'll evade again can I just tank it nope that's like the one thing I can't do I'll evade again, so four, five against three uh, with second action. Two broods in play, so that's successful. He's evaded. Uh, and then I have to move out to here. At the end of my turn, I test three. Uh, it's a minus four, so I take a horror, killing off Lonnie. And then I have to hope I don't take a horror during the uh, Mythos phase. He's going to move. Oh, that's not the right thing. Sorry, he doesn't move. And then he's going to move back up here. Upkeep. Doom. Counter card. Not at my location. Idle hands goes in my threat area. Uh, this doesn't. I committed that to the test of evading him earlier, and then I will resign. Well, we only got two, and it was a huge effort to do it, but um, that was a really fun scenario. Uh, that's probably the most fun I've ever had on this, because uh, it's never easy, and Gloria is so fragile. Um, that she really doesn't have any option but to just eat it. That's kind of been the story of her life this whole uh, campaign. And I'll have to keep that in mind uh, playing with her in the future. I didn't realize how much she'd suffer for not having Scroll of Secrets. But anyways, I, I digress. 
Let's take a look at the resolution. You did all you could to stop the rampaging monsters, but there were more of them than you realized, and you weren't able to slay them all. Exhausted and terrified, you retreat to Zebulon's home and hope to survive the night. In your campaign log, we record that X brood escaped into the wild. X is the total number of brood of Yogg-Stotha still, still in play or set aside. So three brood escape. And um, we remove the powder of Ibn from the deck. And we each gain victory two. Not huge gains, but hey, it's uh, it's something. Thanks very much for watching. I appreciate it. And I will see you guys where the doom awaits next week.